Hello everyone. My name is Stefan Heinoff and I'm a postdoc in the DICE Research Group at Paderborn University. The work I present today was done in collaboration with Jan Scholten, Henning Wachsmuth, Axel Ngonga and Martin Potthast. In this talk I would like to present our work CourseNet towards a causality graph extracted from the web. We made the observation that current knowledge bases contain little causality. They cannot answer basic causal questions like what causes cancer, what causes famine or what causes fire. Search engines must sidestep the problem with text retrieval. For example asking Google what causes cancer, Google displays a textual result and the user is left with reading it, extracting relevant information and possibly exploring further links. On the other hand, asking Google when was Angela Merkel born yields a direct result. Our goal is to enable similar answers to causal questions, for example displaying a list of causes or displaying a small causality graph including intermediate causes. In order to achieve this goal we would like to construct a causality graph which might be integrated into existing knowledge bases. We would like to construct this graph by extracting causal relations from the web and integrating them in a causality graph. In this graph nodes represent causal concepts that is noun phrases. Edges express that one causal concept may cause another. For example we might express that smoking may cause cancer which may cause anemia and pain. We extract the graph both from natural language texts as well as semi-structured sources such as Wikipedia info boxes and lists. Constructing such a causality graph is certainly challenging. For example not everything which might be found on the web might be true in a scientific sense. Nevertheless the web is an important source of causal information where many people express their causal beliefs. In this work we model causality as a single binary predicate may cause which holds between two noun phrases according to some sources on the web. We decided to use a single predicate to make our graph simple to use and to allow the easy integration of our graph into existing knowledge bases. For the sake of simplicity we also do not model any conditions that might be necessary to activate the causality. Despite the challenges we believe such a causality graph to be beneficial for a number of applications, the areas of web search, question answering and natural language processing. In this paper we make a first attempt towards constructing such a graph. We extract most of our causal relations from web pages in the Clue Web 12 corpus and Wikipedia articles. For extracting causal relations from such textual sources we employ the following approach. First we split the texts into sentences and compute the sentences dependency trees. For example in the sentence cigarette smoking causes lung cancer the noun phrase cigarette smoking is the subject and the noun phrase lung cancer the object. Second we learn linguistic patterns to extract causal relations from sentences. For this we employ a bootstrapping approach. We start with a small set of initial cause effect pairs such as smoking causes cancer, identify them in sentences and learn linguistic patterns that signal causal relations. For example we learn that the verb causes preceded by a subject succeeded by an object signals causality. In our case we started with eight initial cause effect pairs, performed two bootstrapping iterations and extracted 53 patterns representing causality. Third having obtained the patterns we apply them to the whole CluWeb 12 corpus which contains more than 700 million web pages. Since our patterns themselves point to a single noun for the cause, a single noun for the effect, but we would like to precisely identify the complete noun phrase, we utilize an additional sequence tagger for this task. Besides extracting causal relations from texts, we also extract causal relations from Wikipedia info boxes and lists. For example, certain keys in Wikipedia info boxes, such as symptoms and risk factors, signal causality. In the info box on the right we might extract the causal relation that lung cancer may cause coughing or that tobacco smoking may cause lung cancer. Moreover Wikipedia often contains lists of causes and effects 
in sections such as causes, symptoms or risk factors. For example, in Wikipedia it says that skin cancer may be caused by light skin color, age or smoking tobacco. While the infobox keys are a controlled vocabulary, their values are arbitrary unstructured text and frequently contain lists of causal concepts. Similarly, list items sometimes contain multiple sub-items. Hence, we employ another set of sequence taggers to extract noun phrases from Wikipedia info boxes and lists. For our causality graph, we reconcile the causal relations from all the different sources to a coherent knowledge graph. For example, we normalize concepts by discarding determiners and pronouns. Then, concepts are merged into a single graph node if their lowercase representations are equal. In this way, we obtain a large-scale causality graph containing about 11.6 million causal relations as shown in the table on the right-hand side. Furthermore, we made the observation that the causality extracted from different sources is largely complementary to each other. For example, out of the roughly 8,000 causal relations extracted from Wikipedia info boxes, only about 200 could be found in the text of a Wikipedia article. Analyzing our causality graph, we made the observation that the medical domain dominates, but other domains are present too. For example, our graph also contains paths like global warming causing draw and famine or lightning causing fire and damage. Moreover, we made the observation that many causal concepts in our graph have a negative connotation. Nevertheless, our graph also contains relations such as love causing happiness or teamwork causing success. The dominance of medical terms and negative connotations might be, at least to a certain extent, be due to our initial cause-effect pairs that we used for bootstrapping. In future work it might be interesting to extend our initial set of cause-effect pairs and observe how this affects the induced graph. Having constructed our causality graph, we estimated its precision and recall. For estimating precision, we randomly sampled causal relations and their sources and analyzed them manually. We considered a causal relation to be correct if the majority of the sampled sources states it. In this way, our whole causality graph with about 11.6 million relations achieves a precision of about 83%. Moreover, we construct a second, high precision variant of CourseNet by demanding that each causal relation was extracted by at least two different causal patterns, or it originated from Wikipedia info boxes or lists. In this way, we were able to obtain about 200,000 causal relations with a precision of about 96%. We estimated the recall of our graph with a question answering experiment. We used the MS Marco dataset by Microsoft that contains a large number of search queries and their correct answer according to human annotators. We filter this dataset to obtain about 1800 binary causal questions whose correct answer is yes. And we try to answer those questions by looking up the contained entities with exact string matching in our causality graph. In this way, we are able to answer about one fourth of the questions. For comparison, similar knowledge graphs like ConceptNet, DBpedia or Wikidata were able to answer much fewer questions. To conclude the talk, we extracted a large-scale causality graph from the web, analyzed it and evaluated its precision and recall. The nature of cause and effect is subject to inquiry in many scientific fields, including the natural sciences, philosophy, the social sciences and the humanities and not least computer science and artificial intelligence. Hence, we believe our causality graph to be useful in a number of ways. In particular, our graph might be used by search engines for question answering and in the area of natural language processing. You can download our graph and sample code showing how to use it from coursenet.org. Thank you for your attention.